Welcome to Vyom Labs webinar Implementing ITIL Product First or Process First The points which we are going to discuss during this presentation are Implementation of ITIL Various stages involved in that Whether process will come first or product will come first in an ITIL implementation Phased implementation approach and what are the low hanging fruits in an ITIL implementation and in the end we are going to take one example of a solution which has ITIL processes in a box here we will talk about BMC Remedy ITSM solution in an ITIL implementation there are various aspects one need to worry about more importantly that the ITIL implementation is an organization-wide initiative. There are people involved, there are processes involved and there are products involved. So one needs to be careful and knowledgeable when they are taking this journey. As you all know, uh, the ITIL version 3, there are five core books service strategy, service design, service transition, service operation and continual service improvement. These books present the guidelines. They don't provide implementation details. Right? So when one is taking the ITIL initiative, then what are the typical stages through which the project goes? The slides talk about that. There are four stages and then there is a continual improvement cycle which you have to go through. So the first stage is assessment, second is planning, third is implementation, fourth is manage. We'll go a little bit in more detail on these various stages of ITIL implementation cycle. In an assessment phase, what you typically do is you do a gap analysis, benchmark against the ITIL processes, what processes which you follow in an organ in your organization and compare those with ITIL good practices and come up with a gap analysis report. In this phase, either you can involve the external consultants who have done the ITIL implementations or one of few of your senior team members who have gone through advanced ITIL trainings and have experience of designing the processes will do the assessment phase and come up with a report which can be presented to the management and basically get the management commitment on the the ITIL initiative. The next stage is you do ITSM planning. It's called as ITSM planning phase. In this phase you define and document processes through various workshops which you conduct internally. You provide training to your staff uh, on foundation or higher level of ITIL courses. If you are going for ISO 20000 audit, then you will additionally provide training on the process and audits so that your team will be able to do internal audits. In the implementation phase, what you typically do is have the technology implemented, have the customizations done in the technology or the products which you choose uh, based on what processes are defined in the earlier phase and define the responsibilities and roles of people who will be part of ITIL implementation. In the manage phase you will have the 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 ITIL implementation going into production in the sense that it is it is organization wide implemented 
and you are there to find service improvement areas, fine tune the reporting, etc. And then you go to a phase called as continual improvement and in this phase it, it's, it's a continuous cycle you go from one maturity level to another maturity level by having this approach of PDCA you identify the quick quick wins go into the, 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 the planning of that implementing those identifying the results and again going into basically having a culture of uh, continual service improvement and within your organization is in institutionalized through this phase. We have seen the various phases through which the ITEL project goes and we have seen that the technology is talked about in the implementation phase. Is this a right approach? So my question to you is when do you introduce the product during the ITEL projects? Should they be introduced at the assessment phase, at the planning phase or at the implementation phase? We at Viom Labs, we suggest that earlier you choose the product or a technology, it is better why it is better because it helps you avoid the costly customizations in the tool which you choose it helps you avoid reinventing the wheel in terms of designing the processes it reduces the time to implement ITIL in your organization and it reduces the risk because all of the points which I discussed so our suggestion is earlier you choose the product or the technology it is better we'll talk about in little more detail in further slides on why to choose product first let's let's go into another view of the organizational ITI initiatives various projects uh, organization can an organization can take in the in the ITSM journey so if you see here in the slide there are user and there is a business and they interact with IT through two different ways one is the users basically interact with IT through service desk and business interacts with IT by defining SLAs and service level management. The users can have additional mechanism to interact with IT having service request management system in place. On the other side of IT, if you see there are different IT devices and applications and databases, the storage devices, the SAN, Oracle, MS SQL databases, different databases, networks, mainframe systems, applications and middleware. So if you see uh, the different projects, ITIL projects the organization can take we are talking about the projects can be like designing and implementing service desk or they, the projects can be in terms of monitoring and event management systems and processes putting in place for an organization. So then you can have CMDB projects and automating uh, the updation of CMDB using discovery tools. Depending on the maturity of the organization, the organization may have the monitoring systems in place. In that case, they can have the initiatives like putting event management system, event correlation systems in place. 
then the impact management systems which basically give the service impact they don't talk only about a server being down the impact management systems help you attach a dollar value to a outage by having an integrated view for the CIOs can be different projects like change management initiatives in your organization or asset management initi initiatives or you are at an advanced stage of maturity and you can have capacity management I have many servers underutilized in terms of their capacity uh, CPU computing capacity or storage capacity and then you may have initiatives like software configuration management and putting automation in terms of putting patches on the servers having compliance achieved on the servers and desktops and things like that you can have identity management initiatives and then when you put all these systems in place and processes in place you may have advanced initiatives like having dashboard and analytics for the CIO to do slicing and dicing of data and things like that. So if there are so many idle initiatives possible in an organization, what is that I should be doing first if I am starting my journey on this idle and IT service management path? So this slide talk about this the phases now in terms of what is the typical first phase I can what all things I can do in the first phase what all things I can do in phase 2 phase 3 phase 4 and phase 5 so these are not hard boundaries depending on your organizational state you may want to choose one phase or the other as the first phase so here it says in the phase 1 an organization can take the initiatives like putting service desk in place having incident problem and change management processes streamlined by defining the processes by having the tool by institutionalizing these things in an organization once i have these basic things in place in terms of incident problem change the next phase of vital initiative I can take the title project which I can take is having the CMDB as a single source of truth and provide the asset management for, for the organization. Now the CMDB can be updated manually or automatically. So once I complete the phase 1 and phase 2 in my organization, I am basically acting in a reactive fashion. Is where something goes wrong and users report those issues, I am typically able to act on them, do problem analysis, implement those changes which are required in IT if they need to be implemented. So, so it's till now it is the reactive approach phase one and phase two when I enter in the phase three I start becoming proactive in the phase three I do establish the infrastructure monitoring tools and have some kind of automation so that if anything is as an event generated in the infrastructure some anomaly being there I should be able to connect it to a service desk system and have the ticket generated so that my support staff start acting on those events immediately rather than users when the users report it so it's like a starting of proactive approach by IT in the phase 3 in the phase 4 what I would do is have service impact and analytics tools put in place so I have basic event management system basic monitoring tools in place then I start doing event correlations and then have a kind of a service view service models 
defined and if a server going down whether it is a production server whether it is a critical service related server or it's just a development server I will be able to differentiate among these and will be able to add prioritize the activities for my IT and will be able to measure the impact as it is happening for the business by having a service impact management you know, analytics kind of it. In the fifth phase I will take the initiatives like provisioning, patch management uh, and configuration automation kind of initiatives wherein I put in the client automation, the, the desktop automation as well as the server automation in place so that when there are patches released by the OS vendors, the database vendors or the security patches I would be able to apply them roll back those changes able to define policies and able to find the compliance quickly than having a manual approach so these are different phases and different idle projects an organization can take so if I am starting in on this ITIL journey then I should typically choose phase 1 and phase 2 as the right starting point these are the low hanging fruits it will quickly bring in control over IT and uh, then it will help you have the incident problem change asset management processes in place and I am able to divide the whole long projects into the smaller chunks so I am able to have quick results show them to management and take some advanced ITIL projects so chances of succeeding increases so so let's say that we choose phase 1 and phase 2 as the the right starting points i need to be i need to become knowledgeable in terms of running these projects so the idle books can be the the right source of information for you to become knowledgeable to do justice to your buying decisions in terms of the, the consultants, in terms of the technology which you are going to choose. So let's go into a little more detail of this phase 1 and phase 2 and how do they map in terms of ITIL v3 books. So if you see these phases they map to three books in ITIL. Uh, one is service operation, incident problem and request fulfillment the other is service transition in which asset and configuration management is talked about and change management and the service design book in which service level management is talked about the service design book talks about service level management in more details so in the book you can see that the tools should define doc should allow you to define document monitor measure report and review the level of IT service provided so the processes which you are going to define and the tool which you are going to choose should allow you to define the SLAs the OLAs for your IT and underpinning contracts for your service providers The service transition books book talks about service as asset and configuration management and the change management. So when again when you are defining the processes or choosing a tool for change management, let's say, then that tool or the process should allow you to 
record, evaluate, authorize as a cab, prioritize, plan, test, implement, document and review the change in a controlled way. Right? It should have different procedures defined for normal, standard and emergency change. The service operation book talks about incident, problem and request fulfillment. So again the book will give you the detailed idea in terms of whether a process defined or a tool board is able to provide you incident management process as per what defined in ITIL as a good practices framework. So the incident management tool or a process should allow you to define priority based on impact and urgency. The problem management tool should or the process should allow you to have the known error database. Request fulfillment for channel to request and receive standard services it should allow you to do that. So we have seen the books and the mapping of the the phase one and phase two, which, the phases which are the low hanging fruits, and how do they map to the different books and the sections in those books. So you can read those sections, refer to those sections, and become knowledgeable to contribute in the process and as well as tool selection. Now when we once we have gone through the details of ITIL books, let's try to find out is there something like a ITIL processes in a box. Our experience is that there are good options available to have something like ITIL processes in a box. This is a when you are deciding in terms of the tool you can have a checklist based approach and which will help you find out if the product or the tool which you are choosing is ITIL compliant or a compatible product. Why do you want to choose ITIL compliant or a compatible product is because it follows the ITIL terminology so whoever the your IT staff members they already would have gone through various ITIL workshops and trainings they would be able to correlate what they have learned and talked about in those workshops to what is there in the tool so they follow the ITIL terminology that is good tools some of these good tools they are implemented across geographies, across verticals and different size of organizations so you get the maturity which is coming out of those many implementations. And then some of these tools are V3 compliant products. OGC has come up with something called as the product certifications and when they certify they basically check in terms of products are ITIL process compliant meaning that the tool uses the terminology and prescribed best practices of ITIL v3. So we thought of taking one of the example to help you understand what kind of features and benefits one can get by having the things something like ITIL in a box. So we have taken here an example of BMC Remedy as ITSM7 as a tool right and if you see why we are choosing that as a tool because that is one of the the tool which which got the certification at a very early stage when OGC announced it. So so we'll take that as one of the good example 
for you to be help you visualize the ITIL in a box kind of a concept. So BMC Remedy ITSM 7 tool basically consists of asset management, change management, service desk kind of functionality. So we'll go in more detail of that. So going into more details, the service management process model is a kind of a visualization tool which will help you understand what kind of processes, procedures and work instructions that are defined in BMC Remedy ITSM 7 tool. So this tool is coming, is been built over the period and has the learning captured of 100 plus service management implementations. So you get all that maturity of those many implementations within this visualization tool as well as the solution which BMC calls as BMC Remedy ITSM 7 has all these work instruction processes and procedures inbuilt within the tool. So it helps you in terms of uh, save months of efforts in terms of process definition. CMDB is an important piece in an ITIL project so the CMDB can should become a single source of truth and the CMDB can be a federated uh, can have a federation op option and the CMDB should be continuously updated by having some kind of a discovery tool so that uh, your manual efforts are reduced and CMDB is up to date as per what is changing in your IT. A service desk tool typically should help you have incident and problem management ITIL best practices captured within the tool. It should have incident templates and matching. It should have multi-tenancy features so that you can have the tool configured for a larger organization where there are multiple organizations within the organization and you want to have a data separation. So typical service desk tool uh, and, and uh, the, the project should help you reduce the MTTR by around 20% should have increased the first call resolution by good amount of percentage should have helped you reduce the incident registration time significantly. So these are the benefits which you can get by having a service desk tool and the incident and problem management processes being institutionalized in your organization. There can be a desktop capture tool which helps you have the, 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 the details in terms of your users and their difficulties being captured and record and playback kind of a thing available and connected to a ticketing tool. A change management tool and the process should have help you in terms of change impact analysis, collision detection, right? And uh, it should have help you improve the planning and deployment, it should have enhanced approval functionality for the cap. So if such tool and the process with, if you implement in your organization, it should help you reduce the change failure significantly. It should help you cut cost per change event. Right? It should help you accelerate deployment of critical business services. The asset, asset management tool should help you have the full asset life cycle management. It should have procurement and retirement workflows. It should have asset inventory and configuration management. So when you put an asset management system, it should help you reduce asset costs. It should help you reduce software licenses cost. It should help you planning your purchasing better. It should help you optimize your contracts with your vendors. 
because you are getting a consolidated view in terms of whom you are paying, how much you are paying, when is the expiry of AMC and things like that. A knowledge management system which is the important piece in terms of having the decrease in MTTR. So the knowledge management tool should allow you to have the workflow required for publishing and retiring the articles, authoring the articles. It reduces the training time for new employees, it reduces the MTTR and it helps you publish the content faster on, on the knowledge management system. The dashboard and analytics tools, they give you the organization level view in terms of vendors and budgets for them. You will be able to observe the, the different, different services which IT is providing to business and what how that service is performing in terms of its changes, change failures, incident, the, 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 the pending incidents and things like that. It's kind of a dashboard for CIOs and it will allow you to do some kind of a slicing and dicing of data so that you get a good analytics coming out of the data generated through the ITSM tools. The service management tools should help you have SLAs defined, you should be able to find out the penalty, reward and impact of cost graphs. It should basically integrate with other processes like incident problem chain so you will be able to define SLAs for them in terms of response time, resolution time, should allow you to do escalations to the higher managers when certain milestones are reached and the incident is not resolved. So basically the benefit you get is end-to-end -end view of service delivery right? and you are able to align IT with business priorities by having SLAs defined. So, so I am at the end of the presentation now. In conclusion I would like to say that ITIL and ITSM is a journey. It's not like you can you want to chew everything at one shot you will take phase have a phased approach and in this phased approach you can have something called as low hanging fruits the process and function which are to be done in the first phase second phase you can identify those and attack those rather than trying to address each and every process and the functions. Introduce the products or the technology at a very early stage of ITIL initiatives which will help you reduce the cost in terms of costly customizations, the risk of having a very long cycle of ITIL definition time and something like reinventing the wheel because these ITIL products come with inbuilt ITIL processes. Since you are choosing the product at a very early stage, you can have a checklist based approach for the product selection because you have not defined the processes when you are choosing the products. And go for proven products which have ITIL processes inbuilt because the last thing you want to have is that you are in the middle of ITIL projects and you find that the tool is not able to meet the requirements of your organization and kind of this would be a disruptive thing and replacing tool again be a big challenging and costly affair. So go for a proven product that would be our suggestion. That's it. Thank you.